it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're zooming in and focusing in on a really interesting concept when it comes to understanding the psychopath, the emotional manipulator who exists in human form as an intraspecies predator who does not have a conscience. These are personally disordered individuals who by virtue of their neural network and their neurochemistry, their neurohormones, the way that they wire and fire and then create their thoughts, cognitions, emotional uh, uh, perspective, emotional connection or resonance with words, concepts, feelings, creates a real sort of um, lack, uh, a very deep and profound lack of empathy for other people. In other words, they really truly don't care about others. They don't have a sort of feeling for others. They they don't have an experience of love, if you will. Um, they have more of a sense of superiority, um, entitlement, uh, feeling that they can pull one over on people on a regular, daily, consistent basis in order to get what they want. So it just because of the, the, the way that their reward system is set up, they're very rewarded. Um, they have a kind of a, a, a baseline of boredom. Um, so because they don't really have this emotional connection or attachment to life or others, they get empty very easily. Sort of their baseline um, experience, if you will, is one of emptiness, one of depletion, one of um, apathy or really sort of um, boredom. In other words, a really, you know, a lot of people don't go there. They don't feel that bored. Um, they can find something that they can connect to, relate to, or feel passionate about. The psychopath doesn't, that's not their life experience. Because of their neural network, the way that their brain is wired, and then what we call the neurotransmitters, the way that they're sensitive or hypersensitive to the reward um, a neurochemical of dopamine they basically become addicted to this rush of dopamine. So um, they're rewarded oftentimes by pulling one over on people or um, sort of manipulating others, um, you know, keeping this facade um, over others um, and that they are a certain way, yet they don't feel, they don't relate to the mask that they, that they have. So they, there's a real disconnect there, but Regardless, um, there's this um, high, you know hypersensitivity to dopamine, and coupled with a lack of, um, you know, the empathy mirror neurons, which allow people to you know them to kind of mirror and relate to people. You know, you've basically got um, you know somebody who takes advantage of others and um, who has a, a lack of empathy, which means they have a lack of attachment to really anybody. Um, it can be their family, their their close family, their job. I mean, you know. Um, they don't have, they can just move very fluidly through um, hardship. I mean, they really just don't have a sort of, you know, you won't see them get um, sad when their dog dies, um, sad when they go through a divorce, sad when they've just hurt you. They, they're just, they just don't feel it. I mean, they'll just be looking at you very dumbfounded, like, look at this person who's reacting, you know, I don't ever feel this way. So you might see that they just have this blank zombie look like while you're freaking out. And then furthermore, they'll just be able to continue hurting. Um, they don't learn, um, you know, they might have hurt you. Um, and, you know, you they might just give you lip service, you know, um, you know, I'll never hurt you again. I'm so sorry. You know, and they'll just like hand over flowers like they're handing over a loaf of bread. Um, they'll hand over, you know, um, themselves just like they were, to, you know, handing over, you um, just a piece of paper. There's no, it's a very objectified um, existence for them. So, um, you know, and a lot, oftentimes people feel, oh, you know, the man get the, you know, the raw end of the deal because they're the ones who become excessively violent. Um, you don't see a lot of maybe women resorting to the violence, but these are the people who will really feel that they can just transcend any rule, law, regulation to get what they want. Um, they can, um, you know, go into um, back offices of offices and, and just, pull information or steal money um, without feeling bad. It's just, they're like, well, the information's there. I'm just going to take it. So, I mean, they have that sort of thinking where most people would be like, um, no, I'm not going to go into this office and do this or that, of course. Um, so that's how most people, um, the bulk of society will feel a sense of, you know, this is my job. I wouldn't do that. I know not to act without integrity because I see the consequences. Um, you know, so we you know, keep ourselves intact. We've got some, you know, brakes in the car, if you will. 
The psychopath, there's no brakes in the car. Um, the car was built without brakes. They just will go and go and they'll hurt and they'll hurt. Even if they've been with a person or an employer for a certain amount of time, they'll continue to take advantage and victimize people. But not only will they continue to do that, but they'll do it with a sort of pleasure. They will become, their dopamine will become rewarded by doing this. They'll see how people become distracted. They'll see how people will lose their heart, you know, their home, their car, their family, um, their horses, their boats, whatever it is. And they'll be, you know, they'll have a, a feeling of delight knowing that they have like hurt somebody because they are rewarded by this type of behavior. These are the people who injure animals. These are the people, whatever, whatever. We're not going there right now. What I want you to understand is how they get in and how they victimize people. And that is through the concept of indirect persuasion, where they basically have you eliminate your sense of identity, your values, and then put in their um, their desires with you. In other words, um, um, you know, in conditioning your behavior. So, for example, you might be a very hard worker. You show up to work. You get the job done. You have a, a sort of um, pleasure about a job well down, done. You know, that is what you're about. You have a, a quality about you the psychopath does not have. They are able to glean information about you while they see you in this task. Well, you know, you, you say, I can't do that. I have to go to work. Um, I have to focus on my job. I can't focus on your text right now. I have to do this. You know, I can't stay out that late. They see that you have these boundaries and they see that you have a, a productive focus. You know, you have a pride in a job well done. You have a sense of responsibility about you. And then that's where they're going to target. That's where they're going to go for because they know that like that's the glue within your soul. That's what you feel good about. That's yours. Like, and they don't have this. They don't have that quality. They don't have that pride. They don't have that responsibility. So for them, the hot spot, the hot ticket is for them to try to get in and dissolve that experience of you and then begin to condition you through indirect persuasion and how, you know, how to violate your own standards, violate your own sense of integrity violate your own values so that they begin to wash it away, break it down, break down the boundaries and begin to condition you otherwise. Um, and so um, basically this is in the term in the way of subtle suggestion. So they might say, um, you know you you know so this is you know how uh, it's very, very painful. Um, and it's very, very, um, and I feel really for the people right now who have been victimized by this. And I just, my heart and prayers are going out to you right now if you have encountered this. And I know it's very painful. And I know that a lot of people who have been through this have a lot of sadness. And I know a lot of people actually cry while hearing these videos. So if you're very upset um, and this is taking place, you know, have faith because the solution is here. Um, and I want you to understand what has happened so that you understand why you're feeling so sad, but the, the subtle suggestion is um, basically where this is then, you know, you turn against yourself in order to identify with them, like the Stockholm Syndrome. Um, all this really weaves together. Um, and so, for example, you know, um, they might give you subtle suggestion like, um, you know, you... Um, you know, you like to do this and this, whatever it is, or you like to dress in that and that. Um, they'll give you a subtle suggestion or a command, which gets you oftentimes is, you know, contrary to that which you hold dear. For example, you might hold dear the fact that you have a lovely job. So they might try to, you know, drip down into you. You know, you love to travel, don't you? You love to take time off work, don't you? You love to, um, you know, uh, blow off your... Uh, doctor's appointments, don't you? Or they'll give subtle suggestions where, you know, oh, we'll help, you know, I'll help you through that um, when you can actually do it for yourself. Um, you know, um, I, you know, I, you know, and, you know, like um, pouring your own gasoline, um, you know, I can do that for you. And then they'll take away that very kind of um, responsibility and accountability that you have. And then they'll begin to condition you to disempower you. It is very, very sad, um, and this takes you know many examples, and a lot of people want me to give some examples. Um, you know, so for example, you know, let's say you're not a big risk taker. 
So they might begin to say, you know, you love riding, you know, um, they might, you know, then just show that they have a motorcycle and then want to take you on risky rides or risky places or have you, you know, dress riskily to please them. And then they'll begin to, you know, um, make subtle suggestions, which then they get their victims, their quote unquote supply, or really, you know, um, the, you know, <laughs> the interspecies predator is, is coming out where basically they're preying upon you to violate yourself and they see this happening. They're able to see through psychopathic eyes what they're doing. You know, they're able to see how you're violating yourself. The time that you take, the money that you spend, uh, the texts that you answer, how you become unraveled and angry at them when they're not there. Or they know just how to trigger you because they're creating an imprint, a new program of suspicion, paranoia, and hostility within you that you know, basically allows them to keep you on the hook and keep other people, other sources of supply, which they're basically rotating behind you, your back, and some that they you know, have in you know, um, six feet deep, some that they have two feet in deep, some in two inches, but they're keeping a number of different supplies. So if you can realize that this is how they work and it's not any better, you don't have to feel jealous why aren't you the number one supply or feeling like this person has it better than you? They seem to be so trustworthy with this person or they're going on more trips and dates with this person. No, that person does not have it better than you. They have it worse than you because they're not able to see through the mask. They are falling for the illusion. They have not trusted themselves enough to see the exposure, which you own. So you need to own it and um, the, it is very important to understand how that took place, which is the indirect persuasion, the subtle suggestions, which got you to buy in that your own judgment was not adequate, but it had been supplanted by the psychopath and their erroneous judgment, just really in place to manipulate you. It is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos, that they do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools videos, discussion, and support.